From Las Vegas, it's Let's Talk News Now with Rick and Ella. Welcome back to Let's Talk News Now. If I say the name is Peter Yarl, and I also say Paul Stuckey and Mary Travers, that may not mean anything to you right away. But as soon as I say Peter, Paul, and Mary, that's going to immediately ring true with you because they're an absolutely dynamic group of the 1960s. I'm going to say predominantly the 60s. I hit it right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Spanned 40 years, though. 60s, 70s, 80s, 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 and even 90s. Really? Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. when, when I look at you, Joni, who portrays, um, portrays Mary Travers, my, I immediately am like awestruck because you look so much like her and you sing so much like her. As I recall, maybe, I'm, maybe it's a blind fog, maybe I'm getting to rewrite history, but the point is that you do. Do you get a lot of comments about that? I do, actually, and, and you know, I, it's hard for me to know. I know only what I've seen because I've studied her and I try to sound like her. Um, we do our best to make me look like her. But middle-aged guys like I just kind of drooling or whatever. Uh, <laughs> like, yeah, well, not all the time, no. No. But, but, um, but you know, I wasn't. You know, I wasn't born in the '60s. I was born in the '70s. So I kind of missed all of their heyday. But you know, it's, so. But it's a, it's a compliment. I mean, it's fun. Peter, you represent Peter Gordon, correct? I am Peter Gordon. You are Peter Gordon. My question for you is: When you're doing this type of work, and people come to you after the show. What kinds of responses do you get? Oh, you were very serious. You're just like him because <laughs> you're you're so into the music. Uh, but I can I consider that a compliment because he was so socially conscious, and um, he was very particular about their sound and the, their presentation and how he wanted them to be perceived by the public, and uh, certainly the message that they were trying to share with with the public and their fans and it was such a, uh, a hard time, uh, amazing social changes were taking place at, at that time, whether it be the uh, interracial, whether it be Vietnam, whether it be just the love of folk music. I was going to say, and for yourself, when, when you're doing something, like, when you're doing a tribute of any type, is it harder? Is it easier because you have something to reflect on or is it more difficult because you have to be almost better than they were uh, because the expectation of the audience? Well, it, the nice thing about doing a tribute as opposed to being impersonators is even though Mary, Joni looks a lot like Mary and acts and all that, fortunately I don't have to look like Paul, but Paul and I are so close to being the same is that he was the comedian. He wasn't the uptight guy like Peter, and it fits perfectly. I'm just saying. What? Uh, now, is this true? Does <laughs> is this he, carry uh, over? Uh, yeah, absolutely. He is so funny. He's our comic he relief. Is, he's just my job. But the music itself, it's wonderful music. So because of our backgrounds, we really get into the music. And it, because it's someone else's music, you don't have to work quite as hard to make it original because you're not. You're making it exact and you're trying to sound as exact as possible. Instrumentally, right. Instrumentally, vocally. vocally. So when we talk to people, they go, oh my God, you sound just like them. Right. Oh my God, if I close my eyes. And that's a pretty cool compliment. Well, here's the thing I immediately noticed. First off, when I was watching some of your clips and so on, and preparing for this, and the guy did actually study. Okay, <laughs> the very first thing I recognized was this is it, the mic tree. The famous mic tree. It was the very first time I had ever seen a mic tree where there's three mics coming, you know, and actually all, and then the rotation, where all three of you were uh, together. If we remember, they started out with one mic. They didn't have all the electronics that we have today, and they had to really work, and they worked on their blend. And where everybody's so independent today, and you can do it in the sound studio and just make it the way you want to make it. You can even make the in tune if it's not in tune. But uh, they had to work really on, on their harmonies, and then uh, yeah, that three mic idea brought us together, kept us together in our working. Okay. Next thing I'm going to, we're going to go down memory lane a little bit. Memory lane for me, okay? <laughs> so I immediately, the song, I, I Had a Hammer. Is this like mandatory, must be done at every show? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's the opener of our show. It's yeah. written by Pete Seeger. That, ha that had to be one of the greatest mantras of the, of the I would say the 1970s, do I have it right? Do I have the Change, right? absolutely. They yeah. actually played it at the, the march with Martin Luther King. They actually were at the march, they actually played that song at the march. That Newport the Folk anthem. Festival, yeah. when they started in 1962, also at uh, the Bitter End in Greenwich Village, where they had their launch. 
Unbelievable. Mm -hmm. For you, when you're hearing a song like that, if I had a hammer, impact you at all? Or is this just strictly just it nostalgia does. bucks, three old men over here? <laughs> <laughs> well, it, you know, it definitely brings back memories for them, but it's definitely applicable to today, too. I mean, with the times, the, the economic crisis that we're dealing with, there's a lot of people who feel that kind of suffering, and they can relate. These, the music of Peter, Paul, and Mary today, back in the day, is so relevant today. Mm -hmm. And um, I absolutely love a lot of the messages that they convey in their songs. Yeah. I want to thank the three of you for joining me here today. Let folks know that you're going to be down in Anthem on August 31st, but you're already sold out. Sold out. Already. Tough, tough job. Someone's got to do it, right? <laughs> <laughs> but you will be back here in the Las Vegas area soon, I hope. Yes, yes. Okay. Be sure and come back and visit us. Let us know what's going on so we can let the folks out there know. Thank, thank you so you. much, all three of you. What a great. Thank you. Thank you thanks, very, very thank much. You, and thanks, thanks for allowing an old guy to enjoy his moment. <laughs>